Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, happy almost December. We only got like 10 days left. Yes, I know, it's almost March already. Anyways, so welcome back to another video. Now, today, um, I was checking out my comments and I realized that my plutonium based RVMK video was. Easily my most popular one, and the one that I got the most engagement for. The rest are... I mean... Yeah... Like, people don't seem to care about them that much. That doesn't mean that I will... Necessarily only make RBMK videos from now on. It just means that I'll be making more of these. More often. So today I'll be showing you how to make an RBMK Reosim! Reactor, and I know you might be scared. Oh, no, you need different components, but no So normally um, for your uh, RVMK reactor you would need your fuel rods your control rods structural columns steam channels tanks and carbon neutron reflectors console Slarge column coolers and steam connectors and different kinds of pipes and fluid identifiers and turbines and cooling towers but guess what? Today, all of that goes away. Because with RVMK Reassim, the brand new technology, kind of, <laughs> we can make an RVMK with just these simple materials. Hold on. With just these simple materials, all you're going to need is some RVMK fuel rods, Reosim, of course, which you can make with two big uh, small steel shells, one RVMK structural column normally, and six zirconium cubes, um, RVMK moderated control rods, RVMK Reosim water inlet, RVMK Reosim steam outlet, uh, any kind of concrete, I'm um, using ductrete, the RBMK console, cover panels, and the console linking device. So, let's get to it. The first thing uh, that you're gonna need to do is to set up the game rules. So type game rule uh, dial via sim boilers and set it to true. It is normally on false. And when you set it to true, um, the rules of these rods switch to be those of actual realism. It doesn't change your already set up um, RMK reactors, so don't worry about that. Um, so, what is Reasim? Basically, it is um, realistic simulation. And so today I'm going to be showing you how to build a very basic reactor with Reasim. So, yeah. Just place down your RBMK fuel rod. It doesn't need to be moderated. In fact, it's better if it's not moderated. Now come out... Let's say four. Yeah, four. Come out four on every side. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Those five. And now just fill in the blanks like this like you would with a normal RBMK reactor. Now with Reasim, even with uh, very small reactors, we can still pump out quite a large amount of power. So... Did I say large or tiny? <laughs> I meant tiny. Even with tiny reactors, we can crank out quite a bit of power out of them. Let me just make this look a little bit better, because... Well, let's just say I'm not the best architect. Yes, there are probably already too many. But hey, provided you have the materials, this will totally be worth it. Don't worry. So, uh... Yeah. 
finish that up. And in total, you should have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 6 by 6 RBMK reactor, just in this shape. Now you're going to need to break some of these uh, fuel rods and put in some control rods. Now before I do anything else, you may be asking, but Chosen, if you've got fuel rods everywhere, it's going to generate a lot of heat, and if you don't find a way to get rid of that heat, well this is going to explode immediately, and you would be correct, but this is reason. So place down a couple control rods, uh, remember, it's... Um, the reactor is way safer <laughs> if you use um, unmoderated uh, fuel rods and moderated control rods. It just makes things much more easier to control. Just make sure that you got enough control rods so that every little nook and cranny is covered. I think that that's good. Yeah, that seems good, but you can add more if you want. Now, uh, we need to cover the entire structure in ductrete, or concrete, or any kind of radiation blocking um, uh, building material to prevent radiation from leaking out and killing everything, which we don't want, of course. Uh, so, just build a, a small containment building around the reactor, just like I've done here. Let me just get my magic wand. Uh, hold on. <laughs> wand. Uh, building wand. Building wand. I'm using a different mod for this. Uh, hold on. Yeah, I'm using a different uh, wand mod because this one is more. Configurable, configurable, but you can use, you can just build it by hand, for all I care. So just build up the containment structure and so it's the same level as the RBMK. Perfect. Now our, our reactor should be protected. And now, touching um, one of the fuel, uh, touching, if you want, on the sides, you cannot do it on the bottom, which is... I know, a big disappointment. Place some Reassim water inlets, which you can make with, sorry, with a steel tank, um, some iron plates, and some steel ingots. I recommend that you have multiple, because um, especially larger reactors are gonna eat up uh, quite a lot of, of water. And then, on some other side, you can have the steam output. Now, all you need to do is, well, place it on the console, <laughs> somewhere, I'm assuming you've got this in that control room or something, link that up, there we go, so now the basic reactor structure is done, now all you need to do is just, you know, finish linking it up and everything, so let me grab a, a big A tank, a heavy infinite water barrel, well, don't know what that lag was. Maybe infinite water tank. Oh, hello. There we go. It's lagging a little bit. I don't know why. Uh, and some ducts. Alright, I don't know what's going on today with, with not enough items, so, and also grab the water fluid identifiers. Are you good? Why wouldn't it, why wouldn't it let me? Just literally won't let me. Okay, okay, there we go. So now, we set the time today, because it looks ugly. Place down your tanks and just start pumping in water, basically. Through the sides, identify both those as water. How did I get another one? Let's set that to output. 
And as you can see, uh, these should start to fill up with water. Now, I, um, the water does distribute around, and you do need to wait until it's uh, completely, you know, everywhere. <laughs> as, I, as I would probably say. But, um, but I still recommend that you have multiple um, water sources, because um, it, it helps uh, with very hot running reactors. It basically has the same rules as the normal RPMK. Okay, have lots of have lots of water because otherwise uh, the reactor is going to violently explode. So I just do that and wait until the water buffers have you know filled up. And meanwhile, we can get our steam production. Now it is um, of note that with Reasim you can only produce super dense steam. You cannot produce ultra dense steam, unlike with the um, normal RBMK. So that's slightly disappointing, but realistic, I guess. You're also gonna need some turbines, and well, that's pretty much it. Leviathan. I always like to use the Leviathan steam turbine. However, you can use any turbine that you have accessible to you. And on the side, just make um, a turbine. Just make the turbines. Actually. Now I'm gonna show you something cool that you can do with with these. You can grab uh, the industrial steam turbine. There we go. And you can make a really cool looking uh, steam turbine. Just go out, no. Go out and leave three blocks in between. And there we go. So the thing is that this is gonna be like a high pressure system and this is gonna be the low pressure system. And then square it up, place another turbine, and then place your final low pressure turbine. And you should have a minimum of three in between to avoid clogging off the power systems. Now just identify all of these with fluids. This first one should be identified with dense steam, and these two will naturally process steam. This one should process uh, super dense steam. So just grab all the steam out of here. Feed it into this turbine. There we go, super dense steam. And send output here. Input dense steam. And you can have the output here, which is going to be normal steam. Which is going to go into the input of both of these. Is going to feed both of these with normal steam. There we go. And well, just do the low pressure steam now. You're also gonna, you're going to need your cooling towers, of course. Just have enough cooling towers. And then do here. I'm gonna have that two. Two should be enough. And link these all up with low pressure steam. Let's get the low pressure steam fluid identifier. Yeah. Low pressure steam. Just basically all of these steps that we have done before at some point. Water. And then just send this back to the reactor. It's very straightforward. Now, uh, the purpose of Reasim is normally to give like a sort of realistic uh, experience. That's why it's called realistic simulation. But, it also has another purpose. As you can see, my computer... <laughs> I have a potato computer, alright? And I know that you might too. 
So it's good that um, Reassim lets you have um, a lot less ducts because you don't have to connect the coolers and the steam channels individually. You just need to connect them on one side. As you can see, everything is filled up with water. And that is good for people that um, have bad PCs because too much, um, too many ducts can cause quite a lot of lag. So, yeah. Uh, everything's ready. Now, all we have to do is get our fuel. Now, you can use pretty much really any type of fuel you want that has a medium function I'm going with unriched uranium because that's the one I tested it with and just start filling these up with your fuel now depending on how big your reactor is you're obviously going to need a lot more um, fuel rods um, I have seen some people do one by one um, literally reassim reactors that produce a lot of power a lot of power but um, trust me it's worth the material investment for these bigger ones since well they can still pull off quite a bit of power and if and I'll, I'll explain the the function of this in a moment Basically, the gist is that um, the fuel will split as normal, and the reason these are moderated is because. Wait, wait, one sec, one sec. Sorry, uh, I had to do it with something. Um, the reason these aren't moderated is to avoid the reaction from going crazy, and the reason why these are moderated is to control the, uh, the running of neutrons inside the reactor. So let's say a neutron shoots off here and is captured by this control rod. Now this control, uh, the, um, well, a lot of neutrons, a lot of neutrons, and go into this control rod. Now depending on the level of insertion of the control rod, it can either go up, like, depending on the level of insertion, the, new, uh, the neutrons will come out, and they will come out moderated because the controller is moderated. I don't know if you understood, but basically, um, um, the, the selling point is that they have to go through the control rods to split with other, um, with other fuels, which uh, avoids catastrophic chain reactions. So yeah, this reactor in terms of uncontrolled reactions is it's pretty low, although it is prone to running out of water. <laughs> it hasn't happened yet, thankfully for me, so, and I doubt it will happen to you, hopefully, but just make sure to have loads of water around, you're gonna need it. So just finish. Filling these up. I know this takes a while, but I really can't do much else about it. Sorry. Just load this up with fuel. Remember, as always, you can use any type of fuel you want. I'm using natural uranium because it's the most abundant. Um, if you use the mine factory reloaded drill that I showed a long time ago, then it's likely that you'll have heaping amounts of uranium and won't know what to do with it and especially early game you won't have access to enrichment processes so if you can if you can go for the rvmk then uh, go for reasim and unenriched uranium it still produces a good amount of power and as long as the water inside this reactor never runs out you should be fine Now let's, well, let's cover these all up. If you want, you can color the control rods. I'm not going to because that will take too long. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just um, finish up all this. Finish covering up the reactor. It's going to look very Chernobyl ish. But don't worry, it's all. Kind of part of the plan. 
Right, so now, uh, all you gotta do is, well, I'm gonna get some uh, red copper cables and some spiridium. Uh, and, and Scribidium energy storage block. I'm too lazy to connect all the turbines together, so I'm just gonna have to measure the power output like this. There we go. Now, all that is left is to raise the control rods. I'm gonna raise them by 30% initially. I'm gonna set them to 30%, select all rods, raise them, and they should start slowly coming out of the reactor, as you can see. So the time today again. Okay, let's pull them out by 45. <laughs> now all that's left is to input um, neutrons into your reactor. And the way I'm doing this is with a self-igniting MEP fuel rod. And as you can see, the reaction will start going on. It will start producing heat. And that heat will start to boil steam, which will start to turn turbines. And that is it, really. If you want more power, you obviously can increase the... Uh, the you can raise the control rods more. As you can see, we're getting uh, quite a good amount of power. We're getting a total of about total of about a couple million. <laughs> and yeah, as long as the water never runs out in this reactor, you will be fine. As you can see, the water is ticking down. Ooh, that actually kind of scares me. Spoopy. So yeah, you're gonna need, um, you're probably gonna need more water. Anyways, guys, that was, uh, it for today. Quite a long video, I know. Um, I'm back. I'm sorry for being away for so long, but I already explained why this has happened. Thank you for watching. Uh, remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Um, thank you to all the people so far who have commented and have um, liked and subscribed to my videos. I highly appreciate that. It really keeps me going to continue making more videos and putting content out for you guys. So without further ado, this has been The Chosen Individual, and I'll see you later. Peace out, gamers.